I'm out at the six acre site doing some cleanup work here after our fall sales. So I just want to come through and start doing some final pruning on woody plant material now that it's uh, dormant. Some stuff that's not super tender. I can do some late fall, early winter pruning just to get ahead of the curve there. Tons and tons of material on the ground to deal with. I'm going to share some notes on how I move that material in an effective way and what we do with this sort of tops brushy debris. And then I want to do an experiment where I take these old rotten logs. So there's a whole bunch of old larch that fell over um, in the last few years. And you can see just piles of logs that I chopped up with an electric chainsaw enough to be able to move them. But I've yet to send them somewhere meaningful, trying to think through where they could go. I'm realizing a neat experiment that could happen is once I get all of this brush out from this little micro hand dug pond... It no longer has water in it right now because it's dry this time of year. But if I fill this whole space up with logs from the bottom right up to the top in the winter, when the water comes in and carries silt, it can soak the logs thoroughly. And as the water descends next time, I can put some soil on top and potentially grow some really um, water loving, thirsty plants and have those logs break down in the landscape, kind of hide them in a semi-aquatic hugel mound sort of treatment. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start with moving the brush. Moving a lot of brush any sort of distance, it's kind of nice to be effective in how you do so. There's a trick that I've learned where I take something that most folks just have around. I happen to have these in the back of my car because I use ratchet straps to tie down loads on our trailer. But one section of a ratchet strap, I don't need the actual ratcheting part, just the strap with the loop. This makes an amazing way to collect and deliver brush. Let me show you. Start by taking it and spreading it out in a nice straight line, perpendicular to the direction I'm going to take the material. So I'm going to load this up, all this brush on this, and I'm going to go southbound with it. So I've got the strap there, and now I can start taking my brush and laying it over the strap putting all the butt ends in the direction I want to travel and load this thing up quite a bit compared to what I can do if I'm carrying them piece by piece. Really simple pattern here. I've just got the strap laid across perpendicular to the direction I want to go, laid on a bunch of the butt ends of pruned woody branches so that it's closer to the end that I'm delivering and everything's aiming the same way. I should now be able to load this in a way where I can drag it and deposit it over by our brush wall. We'll toss it into the brush wall later on to deflect deer some more and I can move a whole bunch in one fell swoop. So pretty simple. I'll take the strap and feed it through the loop of this, the circular part, and then push down with one foot as I pull up on the strap. That locks in a very, very tight load. So if it's light enough, you see you can just pull it by the, str the strap. You could do two of these if you needed to, and you could have somebody uh, lifting on the back end to help carry. You could have something probably six times this size with two people and hike what would have been 40 loads if you had carried them in one arm, arm load at a time. Yeah, so I probably should have not bumped that. This is a part of our deer brush fence where the deer tend to push through. I've reinforced this over the last day or so quite a bit. I could always use more material. So I'm gonna take my little bundle and bring it nearby. I don't have the bandwidth to weave it into the wall today, but I can at least deliver it. And that's super easy. What's nice about this is once you get it where you wanna to go to deliver it, you just simply grab the one side and slip it out. And there's your pile ready to do the next thing, either to be fed into a biochar uh, cone pit maybe outside or to weave into a brush wall, whatever you want to do with it. But anyway, that's a little side note of a nice way to move lots of brush without a lot of work with this thing. That gets this little uh, seasonal water feature opened up so I can do this experiment. So right now it is just an open hole that will fill with water. If I load it up with logs, what will it look like in being able to feed 
the soil around it. So there's locusts here, there's apple to the north, there's hazelnut here to the east, there's um, elderberry, and then all down slope of this ton more plants, pawpaw grove. And so if those logs are in there, they're soaking up all that water, they're releasing nutrients. As excess water leaves, it'll be nutrified and feed things down slope. Let me start throwing some logs in and see if it's a way to get what is an annoying pile of debris laying around into something more meaningful. I'm glad I went through with an electric chainsaw and made them a little bit more manageable. This is definitely already moving towards soil just a tiny bit. You can see moss on here, but it'll seal the deal if it can be underwater for a few months. Now I can come through and do some pretty thorough raking and final pruning to clean up and reclaim this little walkway here. And it incentivizes me to put the time in towards finalizing. There's a bunch of material in here to be recycled and reorganized. This is our old potting shed from way back when. It's still standing, but I'd like it to be tidier. And having better access and the ability to bring a riding mower through helps facilitate that. And all those logs really didn't fill it much at all, which is awesome because I was hoping to have the ability to feed it all of these random logs laying around. There's a bunch that need to get cleaned up, so I'm going to load some in the wheelbarrow and dump them in. I love the idea that I can fill this whole thing up. I mean, it goes up another two courses easily before I'm at the standing water line. And then if I wanted to, I could rake leaves over it, put some soil. I might just leave it exposed for a while to see what happens with those logs. I think all that moss on there and the water it already has in there, the microbial life will just explode and it'll be interesting to see how well that feeds that system once it soaks and then releases later on. Got a couple more logs to bring over and then I'll take a look again. some more logs here which I think might fit in maybe not but I think they might and then quite a bit more there's actually more logs in here underneath this bamboo grove that I've been cutting back I'd like to fold those in out of the way so I can mow through here and have access and then this winter a pretty big large healed keeled over cracked under wind load there's a real theme here of the larch in this area starting to very much fall away I think I might uh, preemptively harvest the remainders so we can actually get some wood to build with out of them instead of waiting them for them to collapse. But I digress. There's still lots and lots of chunks here. So way more wood than will fit in that little pond. So I'll fill that feature up right up to the brim with this next load or two from the wheelbarrow. And then probably we'll do the same exact treatment to this slightly wider water, seasonal water feature in here. This holds water for about three to four months out of the year. You can see I threw some brush in the bottom already. And I'm just going to pin all that down with logs too. So a semi-aquatic hugel mounds in, in ground, in waterway, semi-watery hoogelies. Whole bunch of logs almost entirely under water once the groundwater picks up again during the winter. And it'll be dry again next year. What an interesting little microclimate this could create. We'll leave this as is. I'll document how this one does later on. I'm going to finalize this work, just tidying up wise, getting logs into that other pond over there. This particular hand dug feature has room to take on so much material. So I'm realizing what I might be able to do is this winter go through some of these rough sketch hugel mounds that were laid along uh, walkways. I put tons and tons of coarse material, like for example, this was where a Scots pine was cut. And so the trunky bits I dropped and chopped up and left, but they're taking forever to break down. So the real chunky stuff that's really sticking out of the soil and not breaking down can get dropped into that pond and probably break down a lot faster. 
And then I'm realizing it holds the option of letting that happen for a couple of years, and then once everything's fully decomposed, in another dry fall, I could dig that material out and regain the pond and have a huge amount of high organic matter, kind of like peat material, to put all around the trees that are growing in this area. So it's almost like literally sweeping some debris under the rug to let it rest for a while to then harvest it later. If I don't want to dig it out, then I can just plant water-loving woody perennials on top of all this when there's soil on there later on. Anyway, that's my spiel on this project. I'll do updates as it goes along. It's funny, I realized I just basically made a pretty long video about moving sticks around and throwing logs in holes. Uh, and, but I think for the right, <laughs> the right subset of folks that watch this channel, that's fun to think about. Uh, let me know, have you done things like this? Do you have hand dug or small uh, seasonally filled water features in your landscape that you have backfilled with really coarse organic matter to help both facilitate the more rapid breakdown of that bulky woody material and then also be a nutrient catch and a nutrient generation system or a silt trapping or a silt slowing uh, part of your system. Has it worked for you? Let us know. And for now I can start raking up material that's around here and dumping it on top of these logs to basically make them invisible. And I can try to revisit this area, which I'm ashamed to even look at through the video camera. It's a pretty abandoned zone. But this winter, uh, before things get too cold, I plan on cleaning this all up. But now I've got this destination for all this kind of woody, chonky whatnot that's been sitting on the surface for a while. Put them in some holes that don't have water right now. Thanks for watching.